Konnichiwa. That's right. Konnichiwa. Welcome back to High Point, guys. I still have my special uh, helpers here with me. You might hear some animal sounds. Fits in pretty good with the, uh, the lesson that we're going to be doing. But I'm excited that you came back for another super exciting adventure. And in fact, on this trip, we're going to discover a whole lot of interesting things about Noah and what it means to be responsible. So I think we should start by figuring out what is the point. So what is the point, guys? I actually heard a couple of you say it. That's right. You can count on me. Say it with me a couple of times. You can count on me. That's right. You can count on me. Absolutely, guys. So what are some of those things that people count on you to do? Mmm, the dishes. Yep, yep. Oh, take the dog out, absolutely. Oh, I heard clean the cat's litter box, yes. Oh, yeah, take take the dog for a walk. My goodness, make your beds, wow. You guys have all sorts of responsibilities. And the truth is we all have responsibilities from feeding the family pet to playing a position on a sports team. Right now, though, you guys have the responsibility of helping me with this lesson. Will you do that? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I have a question for you. If I offered you a delicious snack of cookies, would you want that? Yeah, of course we would want. Who doesn't want cookies? But if I gave you those cookies on a plate that had dried ketchup and mustard and dirty stuff all over one part of it, would you change your mind? Yeah, probably, because gross, yuck. And why would we change our mind? Because the plate is half dirty. That's disgusting. I think that whoever would wash that plate didn't do a very good job and they weren't very responsible. A responsible person would wash the whole plate, not just part of it. And when we are truly responsible, we don't do things halfway. We give it our very best. We give our best because God is the one who we are really responsible to, not people. When we do our best, we win, and so does everybody else. And in today's Bible story, we will discover how Noah did his very best. So let's listen to find out how Noah did his very best for God. Okay? Now last time we learned that God was going to send a flood. And who remembers why God was sending a flood? Yeah, yeah, he was sending it because people were being evil. There was so much evil in the world. And who did God choose to save from that flood? That's right, Noah and his family. And why did God choose to save Noah and his family? Yeah, no, that has nothing to do with Blippi. Guys, he chose to save Noah and his family because Noah and his family were good and loved God. What did uh, God tell Noah to build, though? <clears throat> no! Did not tell him to build a church. What did he tell him to build, guys? No, he didn't tell him to build a space shuttle. Yes, I heard someone say he told him to build a boat. And could God count on Noah to build that boat? Absolutely. Did Noah follow the directions that God gave to him? Yes, he did. Noah obeyed everything God had told him. And when God said to build a giant boat, Noah followed God's instructions right down to the very last detail. When the boat was all finished, it was the exact size and shape that God had said it should be. And now, Noah had another super important job to do. God told Noah to fill the boat with animals and supplies. Noah's family and all of those animals were going to have to live on the boat for a really long time. They would need a whole lot of what? No, no, not TV. 
They would need a whole lot of food and water and bedding. Now, how many of you know how many animals were supposed to be brought out of the ark? I heard it, yes, two of every animal. God told Noah to bring in two of every animal. But did you know that there were seven pairs of two of some certain kinds of animals? That means there was 14 of them. Those seven animals that were in pairs were the kinds of animals that farmers needed. Sheep and cows and goats. And there were also seven pairs of every kind of bird. There are a lot of birds, guys. That is a whole lot of birds that were going to be on this boat. Now, I need you to remember that because it's going to be important later on in the Bible story. But guys, getting back to what we're talking about, it was really important that Noah did his very best. He had to put just the right number of all of the different animals on the ark. Now, we're going to think of some of the animals that Noah would have brought onto the ark. One at a time, I'll act out a couple of animals, and maybe you can guess who that, what they are, okay? What do you think? Let's try it. Yeah, yeah, an elephant. That one was pretty easy, right? What about, what about, um... Yes, a chicken! Uh, what about... That's right, monkeys! Guys, you are doing so fantastic! You guys are super good at guessing your animals, and I guess Noah probably knew his animals pretty well, too, because he spent a lot of time putting them all on the ark. But Noah not only had to move all of the animals onto the ark, guys, he had to load all the food and water that they would need when the flood came. This was a really important part of the job that Noah was responsible for. See, it's... We think of him with just bringing all of those animals into the ark, but he had to have enough food and bedding for every single animal and enough food and bedding and clothes for his family. He was really responsible for a lot of big stuff. What do you think would have happened if Noah had not given his very best? Yeah, he could have brought the wrong food. And some of the animals might have started. He might have even forgotten some of the kinds of animals to put on the boat. He could have had the wrong number of them. He might not have even had enough food for his family. This was a really big job, guys, getting all of the food for all those animals. Can you imagine how much food he would need to feed just the elephants? Or the hippos? They eat so much food! Plus, Noah had to make sure that he had all of that and enough for his family. This job was absolutely ginormous, guys. It was beyond huge. And when it was almost time for them uh, to go, God told Noah, he said, I'm going to give you seven days, seven days to get everything into the ark. Do you think Noah was able to do the job God asked him to do? Yes, he was, because Noah was able to get it all done because he was a responsible person, and he had God to help him. On the day God told Noah to be finished, Noah was finished. God had told him seven days, and on that seventh day, when God came to say, you have to be done, Noah was done because he was responsible. He had his family on the ark. He had all the animals on the ark, and he had all of the food and bedding that they needed. All of it was loaded into the ark. And on that day, check this out. Noah didn't close the door to the ark. Oh. Noah's kids didn't close the door to the ark. The neighbors didn't close the door to the ark. No, God closed the door to the ark. Noah had finished everything that he needed to do. God knew it, and God closed the door now, what might have happened if Noah had not done his best to get the job done on time? Yeah, some people might have been left behind. Things might have not happened the way they were supposed to. I mean, it really is kind of hard to know just what would have happened if Noah had not given his best. But things definitely would have turned out differently for him and his family. 
I, for one, am thankful that Noah knew how important it is to be responsible and work at something with your whole heart. What does that phrase, work at something with all your heart, sound like? I feel like I've heard that before. Oh yeah, it's our life verse. Let's say that life verse again together again. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Colossians 3.23 When we always do our best work, guys, we are telling every single person they can count on us that we are responsible. That means when you have homework to do, work hard to get it done and turned in on time. And to do it right. Or when your mom asks you to take out the trash, do it without grumbling and complaining, and do it right away. Doing our best is not always easy. In fact, a lot of times it's not easy at all. But God can help us. I think we should pray and ask God to help us right now. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, we know that you want us to be responsible and do our very best. Sometimes it is hard to have a good attitude. Sometimes we are tempted to take shortcuts or not to do our jobs right. Please help us remember that we should work as if we are working for you all the time. Help us to do our very best in everything, Jesus. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, guys, being responsible, like I said, is really hard work. And you kids have done a great job showing me that I can count on you to help me with the Bible story. You really have shown me that I can count on you. This has been another really terrific trip, guys. I, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of fun learning about how much stuff Noah had to do. But now it's time for us all to head back home. And I want you to remember to be responsible for everything that you have to do. Try to remember the life verse as you do your homework, your chores, or any other of the responsibilities you might have. I don't know. I feel like learning about being responsible is pretty cool. And I hope you've had nearly as much fun as I have. I also am praying that this week you have a chance, again, to show that even when the work is hard, you are so responsible that people can count on you. And I'm also praying that no matter what happens, that you will never, ever, ever forget that you are loved so very much by God and by us. I'll catch you next time here at High Point. Bye!